My name is Diane Havler and I'm a professor of medicine and I'm co-chair of the International AIDS Conference. Uh, how did you first confront HIV AIDS in your life? Um, as a student, when I was a medical student, I read about the first reports in the MMWR, and I was very intrigued about AIDS, and I wanted to learn more. So when I went to the next step of my training, which is the residency in the United States, I went to University of California, San Francisco, which included San Francisco General Hospital, and that is where I first saw AIDS right when it was exploding in the mid-80s. Now, people are talking about ending AIDS and you have your own experiences from the early years. How can you reflect on that? Well, I can't tell you how thrilling it is to even begin to say that we have some of the tools it takes now to begin to, to end AIDS. And I think being at this meeting for the last couple of days has really bolstered all of our confidence that we can begin to end AIDS. And let me tell you why. I think first of all, over the last couple of years, we've had a series of research breakthroughs that collectively, when you put them all together, make us realize that if we can put them into action, that beginning to dramatically reduce the number of infections um, is, is achievable. The second thing we've seen at this meeting, which is just exhilarating, is high level reaffirmation of political commitment. In order for us to begin to end AIDS, we need data. We need science. We need high level political commitment. We heard this through Secretary of State Hillary Clinton, Secretary of Health uh, Kathleen Sebelius, uh, Michelle Sadibi, Margaret Chan, we have high-level commitment. We also need an economic framework. We heard in one of the plenary sessions at this meeting about how purely from an economic standpoint, investing now in the long term makes, makes sense in terms of the most cost-effective way to approach this disease. We also have community-level commitment and community voices and community reminder that we are never going to solve the HIV epidemic unless we address affected populations. And those affected populations include, but are not limited to, men who have sex with men, people who, people who use drugs, women. Women are disproportionately affected um, uh, all around the world, children. And finally, why do I think we can begin to end AIDS? Because someone's been cured of HIV. We have hope that we can move forward in a research agenda. And also, we have new clues, which we heard about today in the plenaries, about the steps to move towards developing a vaccine. These were developments you couldn't dream of back in 1984. In 1984, we were crushed by the suffering, by the lack of understanding of the disease. We were crushed by not even understanding what some of the infections and cancers were that are affecting our, our patients. We were determined to find therapy. We had no therapy back then. So could we imagine ending the disease in the 1980s? Absolutely not. How important politically is it that the AIDS conference came back to the United States? Oh, it's absolutely huge. It's huge because it's a human rights victory, because it only happened because we were able to lift the travel ban politically. This was a bipartisan effort that was done between President Bush and President Obama, taking away the archaic legal sanction that, that prohibited people from, with HIV from entering the country. Also huge for the United States because the HIV epidemic has just fallen off the national conscience of the United States. Our number of new infections is still extraordinarily high in the United States. 50,000 per year has plateaued over the last decade. So this meeting has brought renewed attention to the epidemic in the United States. It has showcased some of the real challenges we have, but has started the dialogue of how we're going to move forward in the United States to address the epidemic. What's the next step in the AIDS research as you see it? 
In AIDS research, there is a couple of areas that are extremely important. First of all, I would say this new area of research, research called implementation science. It's the how. So we have all these great data. The question is, how do we put them into play? So that is extraordinarily important. And that kind of science brings in all the disciplines of science, social science, political scientists, people who work in marketing, uh, behavioral scientists. So that's, that's a very, very important scientific agenda. We also have the science of reaching out to affected populations. We haven't got it right. We know, the numbers tell us that we're not reaching out. We have to understand how we can do that better. We also have the exciting research on the cure, absolutely paramount, and on new vaccines. But we cannot forget another really important area of research is still getting new drugs that are longer acting and new drugs for TB, which we started to see at this meeting. TB is a leader, leading uh, cause of death for pe people living with HIV, and also new diagnostics. Technology can help take some of these breakthroughs and allow us to bring them to millions of people. How do you see stigma? Is it still a problem in the United States? Stigma is a problem everywhere still for this epidemic. I think we've made progress in education, but stigma is one of the Achilles heels of this, of this disease. Um, everyone's asking, so stigma is not just a problem for HIV, it's a societal problem. And I think some of the steps to begin to reduce stigma are um, people having the ability for people feeling comfortable about disclosing their HIV status, and certainly by taking away laws that is, a, that is one step in the, in the right direction uh, uh, with that. Developing systems that aren't punitive to people but are welcoming to people um, uh, uh, into care, I think are another important uh, step in terms of stigma. But I can tell you, even in San Francisco, when we have people who find out their HIV status, some people still this to, the, to this day, the first thing they say, Am I going to die? Second thing they say, don't tell my family or my friends. And the third thing are they going to say, am I ever going to be able to have kids? I mean, we have answers to all these questions now, but we still, if there wasn't stigma for HIV, people would not be asking those questions. What's your personal key message here? My key message is if we put our, our will and our resources into it, we can begin to end AIDS.